To begin our study of the Renaissance, let's review the background of how the Roman Church became so powerful. In 1054, the First Great Schism divided the Christian world into Roman Catholicism in the West and Greek Orthodox in the East. The Pope, who resided in the Vatican, was the leader of the Roman Catholic Church and the de facto ruler of Western Europe. Toward the end of the medieval period, a second split occurred called the Great Western Schism of 1378 to 1417. It all started with the Avignon Papacy, a period from 1309 to 1376 when the French Pope refused to live in Rome, so the papacy was moved to Avignon, France for 67 years. At the end of this turbulent political time, Pope Urban VI was elected Pope and intended to reside in Rome, while Pope Clement VII was elected to the Avignon Papacy. The two popes excommunicated each other, and for the next 39 years, there were two popes, one in Rome and one in Avignon. For a short period, there were even three popes. The Great Schism ended in 1417 with the election of one pope, Pope Martin V. The Italian Renaissance began in Florence, Italy around 1400, followed by the High Renaissance in Rome. The Renaissance began in Italian cities and spread north throughout Europe in the late 15th and early 16th century. The term Renaissance is a French word meaning rebirth and is characterized by strong developments in painting that revolutionized art, strong power of the Catholic Church, development of science and modern medicine, rediscovery of the classics and humanism, the idea that humans have control of their own destiny. Renaissance art was influenced by the pictorial revolution of Giotto. He began using advanced painting techniques, the use of light and scale to create works of art with perspective. This is his fresco, Lamentation Over Jesus, 1305. Giotto painted the walls of the Arena Chapel in Padua, Italy. In 1425, Lorenzo Ghiberti won the commission to design the doors of the Florence Baptistry. His gilded bronze panels of the Gates of Paradise took him 27 years to sculpt and cast. The panels illustrate scenes from the Old Testament. Donatello sculpted the first freestanding nude since Roman times. His statue of David, commissioned by Cosimo de' Medici, shows a youthful David standing heroically with one foot on the slain Goliath's head. It blends the religious imagery of the medieval period with the classical Greek contrapposto pose. Masaccio painted the fresco Holy Trinity for the Santa Maria Novella Church in Florence in 1427. He uses perspective to give the figures depth. The subject here is the Trinity, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. See if you can find the symbol of the Holy Spirit. It's the white dove just over the head of Jesus. In the foreground, notice the image of the skeleton and the inscription, I once was what you are, and what I am you also will be. This is a memento mori, or a remembrance of death. Painter, sculptor, and inventor Leonardo da Vinci was a true Renaissance man. In addition to his artwork, he studied anatomy, wrote detailed observations in his notebooks, and made plans for a flying machine. His Madonna of the Rocks used the technique of spumato to create a dark, smoky background. This painting shows Mary, the infant Jesus, a young John the Baptist, and an angel in a rocky setting. Notice the careful composition of the subject's heads, which are arranged in a diamond or cross-like shape. The Last Supper, a 1492 fresco on the wall of a church refectory in Milan, shows the aftermath of Jesus' proclamation that one of his apostles will betray him. Notice the sharp V shape that emphasizes the divide between Jesus and his betrayer, Judas, to his right. The famous Mona Lisa gained much of its fame after it was stolen from the Louvre in 1911. It was recovered two years later. This portrait has fascinated many viewers due to the subject's ambiguous half smile and her gaze that is aimed directly at the viewer. Leonardo recorded his observations and drawings in his notebooks, which he penned in mirror writing. This is Vitruvian Man, a sketch of a human man inscribed in a circle and a square. Da Vinci believed there was a divine connection between the proportions of the human body and the universe. Leonardo's dissections and drawings of the human bodies led to discoveries about the anatomy of the body, including the ventricles of the heart and the placement of the fetus in the uterus. Sandro Botticelli brought back themes from classical mythology in his work, Birth of Venus. Venus, or Aphrodite to the Greeks, was the goddess of love and beauty. In this painting, she is shown floating up to shore on a shell. According to the Greek mythology, 
Aphrodite was born from the sea foam after Kronos castrated his father, the sky god Uranus. Michelangelo started his career as a sculptor. His Pieta, the classic pose of Mary cradling the dead Christ, was sculpted sometime around 1496 while the artist was in his early 20s. David was completed in 1504. Pope Julius II commissioned Michelangelo to sculpt his tomb, a project he worked on for 40 years with a plan for 40 statues, including this image of Moses. During the time he was working on the tomb, he painted the frescoes on the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel in the years 1508 to 1512. This is a detail from the creation of Adam, one of the panels on the ceiling. In 1509, Raphael Sanzo was commissioned by Pope Julius II to paint a series of four frescoes for the walls of the Vatican Palace. His School of Athens is the most famous. This is how it looks inside the library of the Pope's palace. It is surrounded by the paintings representing theology and literature. Most people are used to seeing this view of the fresco. School of Athens contains great philosophers of the classical period. In the center are Plato and Aristotle. Plato points his hand toward the sky, representing his theory that the real world is a spiritual realm full of abstract ideas, while Aristotle extends his hand outward, representing his idea that knowledge comes from experience. The fresco uses the technique of a vanishing point to create the depth and perspective that makes this work look almost three-dimensional. Raphael was commissioned to paint the portrait of Pope Julius II in 1512. Another patron of the arts was Lorenzo de' Medici, grandson of Cosimo de' Medici, part of the wealthy, influential Medici family. The Medici family owned banks in Florence and financed much of the arts and culture in Florence during the Renaissance. Four of their members became Pope and their wealth and influence spread to the church. Several Medicis, including Cosimo, kneeling in front of the infant Jesus, and his grandsons are posed as the wise men and others in Botticelli's 1475 Adoration of the Magi. In the Renaissance period, music became more secular and polyphonic and was recorded in print form. A madrigal is a four-part vocal song. Guillaume de Fay was an influential and famous composer of madrigals in the 15th century. Heinrich Isaac of the Netherlands wrote masses, motets, and instrumental music. Joaquin de Pre, a contemporary of Isaac, used imitations in his composition, using different parts or voices to repeat a melody called word painting. Italian diplomat Niccolo Machiavelli wrote the influential The Prince in 1513. According to Machiavelli, the greatest moral good is a virtuous and stable state, and actions, no matter how cruel, to protect the country are justified. It is vital that he do anything necessary to keep his power. However, Machiavelli strongly suggests that above all, the prince must not be hated. He does give a concise answer on whether or not a prince should be feared or loved. He states, a wise prince should establish himself on that which is his own control and not in that of others. He must endeavor to avoid hatred, as is noted. He also says it is best to be both feared and loved. However, if one cannot be both, it is better to be feared than loved. Machiavellian philosophy continues to be influential in world politics and philosophy today. <laughs>